Hey guys, hey, it's uh, Dr. Jerry here with Mills Chiropractic and Wellness Center, um, and we're continuing our series on digital dementia, dementia-like symptoms in adolescents um, and, and kids, and, and we're talking about how our interaction with technology um, impacts our brain, impacts our health, and, and how we also... Um, tend to, to utilize poor health decisions along the way with that. And that's really what we're going to get into today is some of the poor health choices we tend to make while using technology. You know, in our previous episodes, uh, we talked about uh, neuroplasticity and stimulating different parts of the brain while neglecting certain other parts. Uh, we talked about the uh, dopamine um, uh, release that we get when we utilize technology and how that can become very addictive. Um, we also talked about posture and the role that that plays not only on physical stress and physical ailments and, and sore muscles and arthritis and degeneration, but also how it uh, affects us emotionally, leading to more depression and anxiety, those kinds of things. And so in today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of hormones that are um, get disrupted to while we're using technology. And, and we're gonna talk a lot about a number of different hormones as we move through it. But today I just wanted to talk about the first two. One of the things that happens when we utilize technology is we utilize a lot of brain power, right? Um, we're getting a lot of visual stimulation. Um, we're getting a lot of auditory stimulation and we're doing, coupling that with a lack of movement. And so what ends up happening a lot of times is we start to get brain fatigue, right? And as we get brain fatigue, our natural response is to try to get some energy to boost that, that performance, right? And so a lot of times we tend to go reach for a couple of things, either caffeine or sugar. Um, and unfortunately, most people just mix the two and have a, you know, a caramel oh. macchiato or whatever they have, you know, it's just a candy bar in a cup. Um, and so anyway, what happens when we're, when we're sedentary and, and we, um, have this brain fog situation that occurs or we, you know, start to sink down we want a little pick me up and we go reach for the sugar. When we, when we intake that sugar, we get this, this sugar spike that occurs and the body's response to the sugar spike is to try to increase, um, insulin. So insulin gets pumped in. And that helps lower the sugar down. Now, the body assumes that we made a healthy choice, that we ate something that was good for us. And, and that so that sugar spike is going to maintain for a period of time, right? It's assuming that, um, we, like I said, we made a, a choice to eat something that's a complex carbohydrate, like a vegetable or um, maybe some berries or something like that. It assumes that we didn't just go eat a candy bar, which is what most people end up doing, or, you know, they grab a bag of chips or whatever the case may be, but they get this big spike of, of sugar and then the insulin comes along and it tries to bring that sugar level down. Well, by the time it hits the bloodstream, that sugar's already left the system. It was a quick bang hit. And so they're left in this situation where they have elevated insulin as that sugar level starts to plummet. Well, as it starts to plummet again a couple hours later, you're, you're, people are faced with the decision. Do they get another sugar spike and try to raise that back up? Or do they, um, you know, forego the, the, the food and let cortisol do it? So what happens is, is when that sugar starts to fall again, the body can, can try to elevate it. And the way that it does that is by releasing cortisol. And so then cortisol starts to spike. And that brings the blood sugar back up to meet the insulin. The other option is they can go and have a, another candy bar again, spike that blood sugar, push insulin even higher, then let the sugar fall out. And so they're it's stuck in this situation with either elevated insulin or elevated cortisol. And if they're really messing things up, which is what often occurs, they end up with elevated both. They have elevated cortisol on top of elevated insulin. Um, and so what ends up happening is the body is saturated with these two hormones. And it can go one of two directions. It can either, if we do the candy bar trick a lot, we get to where we get insulin um, uh, resistance. Our body no longer listens to insulin because it says, hey, there's always plenty around. I don't need to listen to it anymore. I'm, I'm super saturated, right? In that situation, what most people don't really understand is the slang term for Alzheimer's is type 3 diabetes. Basically, Alzheimer's is it's a combination of a lot of things, right? But one of the key elements for Alzheimer's is this elevated uh, uh, insulin in the brain. Um, that's what they call type 3 diabetes or Alzheimer's. Now, on the flip side, with dementia, with dementia, what we see is they have elevated cortisol. 
And so they have uh, cortisol levels that are above the normal average in, in dementia patients. So in either case, whether we have high insulin, Alzheimer's, or high cortisol dementia, both of them are impacting the brain. And we're seeing this in younger people. We're actually seeing brain masses that are shrinking because of, partly because of this. But remember, when we talk about none of this stuff is occurring in isolation, right? All occurring in the same time. We're stimulating wrong parts of the brain. We're releasing dopamine without other neurotransmitters over the top that we would normally get with, with dopamine releases. We have the sedentary, poor posture, um, putting us in a depressed, anxious state. And then we have this elevated cortisol and elevated insulin um, over the top of that. And that really affects brain function, brain wiring, um, brain health over the long run. So anyway, um, hope you got something from today's lecture or webinar. Um, felt like a lecture at times as I was getting into some of this chemistry, but to hang with us. We're going to um, hit you with a few more kind of background things, and then we're going to move forward with how are we going to live healthy with technology moving forward. So thanks for tuning in. 